Hi everybody. Uh, I want to do a quick layout update, sort of show you where I'm at. So I told you I went and bought a four by eight piece of plywood, cut it down to width, uh, 18 inches. Down here I curved the corner around. Uh, that is the full width right here. So when I open the door, my closet, that's as far as I can go. I am going to have a little section here. I'll probably cut this off so I can go to all the way to the wall. Right now it's sort of too long. So if I cut it off, it'll go back. I like to have a couple tracks there. I will splice under this to the other piece so I can extend the piece out here with the two tracks on it. Uh, but uh, I've got the angle irons underneath because remember I told you I was worried about it sagging a little bit and sure enough it did uh, now it wasn't completely supported on that end um, so maybe that's why it was causing it it is not screwed in place right now I can move it around the reason why I left this piece of foam hanging out here just on its own is if I decide to put the roundhouse and uh, engine facility in here I may need the space, so I may need to get a piece of foam and sandwich in here and uh, brace that up. If I don't need it, I'll just cut it off. You know, or I can curve it, do whatever I want. Uh, probably shouldn't have cut that corner off like I did, but hindsight is always 2020. Everything is level. Like I said, this piece is pretty much fastened in now, um, tied into to the layout. Uh, this piece is just sitting on, on the brackets. Let me talk about the uh, track plan now. So before I get into the track plan, um, I've had these locomotives a long time. I bought them off eBay. Uh, they were already DCC. But I sent them to my friend, Benjamin, and he put uh, ESU Loke Sound in them. So you will be seeing them showing up on the layout pretty soon we've got a gp40-2 and a gp38 uh, so i think now i have uh, seven engines with low sound in them uh, so i've already tested them out they run great and uh, sound great so you'll be seeing them very soon let's talk about uh, track plan now uh, this was my original thinking I was going to have, as they come out of the curves, the two tracks, I would have a crossover. Main line, of course, is back here next. I was going to have the depot down here, um, crossing with the N&W, have it going underneath that bridge, going out to, to the wall there. Um, as you can see, I've got these tracks just sort of laid in place here. The yard ladder. The problem with this is yard ladders take up a lot more space than you think they do. And especially, I'm not going, I'm using Pico medium radius turnouts. I'm not going with the number fours or the small radius. Uh, medium radius looks better. It's more reliable. So um, if I do this, you know, there's no way I can really have double, I can maybe have two or three double-ended tracks at most. Um, and they're going to be kind of short. And I've got all this space down here. That's dead. Even if I put the engine facility down there again with the backdrop, you know, the roundhouse against the uh, curve, like I'd planned, I still have all this space in here. This this dead zone. They don't want to put a bunch of buildings there because I want to be able to switch the yard and be able to see the yard and everything. So what I'm thinking about now, I'll uh, turn the camera off and rearrange everything and let you see what I'm thinking about now. So I flipped the turnovers over, uh, so you, cause I don't have all the track yet. Think about having the yard come down this way and I'll still have my crossover here. I will have two or three double ended tracks and then I can have several single ended tracks and they can go into this dead space a little bit more. And I can still have the last track feed the turntable and the engine facilities down here. So I think that's a lot better use of my space. Uh, I've got a little bit of dead space in here, but nowhere near as much as I had down here. Uh, and I can cut this shelf down. Now, this isn't fastened down yet. I could 
make this a couple inches narrower if I want to. Um, I'm also thinking about maybe putting um, standard elevator down here somewhere because uh, a lot of times they had you know industries adjacent to the yard and I want to put it somewhere. I know it doesn't look like it but there's three feet from the end of that turnout to the wall so I've got a pretty good um, switch lead. I'm never going to be you know switching cuts of cars 12 cars long or anything like that probably. Uh, so I think that's a better use of my uh, of my space and like I said I may just make this a couple inches narrower so I don't have as much dead space uh, uh, in there and you know I'll, there's plenty of shop building I'm still gonna have the shop buildings along the back wall uh, and everything but uh, you know how to fill this up with stuff I don't want to to reach over and if I brought the main line out more you know out here so the yard was right against this then I'd have to fill all that back there and um, you know that'd just be dead space too so I really, uh, I was watching that uh, second section podcast and Lance Mendheim said that he recommended the maximum shelf width in his mind. You know, I subscribe to his principles. Don't agree with everything he says all the time, but he knows a lot more about this than me. Uh, he says 18 inches is the maximum width. And this is uh, 18 inches right here. But I could easily go down to, to 16. Or I could even go to 14 if I wanted to. I just have to get the brackets um, you know, replace a couple of the brackets because if I go to 14, the white brackets underneath would stick out. But, you know, I've got easily a couple inches there so I can go down to 16. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm going to tally up turnouts and track and start sort of laying, laying this out. Uh, so in my mind, operations-wise... We build the train um, on one of the yard tracks. It would go down. We'd have two trains. One would go down and switch to Chalcothy, and the other one would run through Chalcothy and go to Oak Hill. Probably, I know a lot of you guys aren't going to like this, but once I get the yard built in operation, I have so many Chessie engines now. Uh, that the Oak Hill Industrial Railroad is probably going to take a back seat for a while. And I may just go ahead and run Oak Hill as the Portsmouth branch of Chessie for a while. And I always have the flexibility to, you know, switch back. It's my railroad. I can do what I want. But uh, I may go ahead and, and uh, run some of my Chessie engines uh, more frequently now that I've got, got so many of them. Uh, so let me talk about something else here and I'll let you guys go. Let me get serious here for a second. Uh, the gentleman in front of me and the sunglasses and the ball hat sort of looking off to the side, very good friend of mine. Uh, last year on his 60th birthday, he was having some difficulties and turned out he was diagnosed with ALS. And as you know, ALS is pretty much a death sentence. Uh, usually lifespan is two to five years. So we are supporting the ALS uh, society and we're doing a team um walk uh, about a month from now, end of August, uh, and so I would appreciate, I'll put a link either in the in the comments or in the description, there'll be a link if you want to donate, no amount is too small, and we're the PBR Cruisers, uh, a really good friend of mine, I'm having a hard time imagining, um, you know, life without him in it, to be honest with you because uh, he was just uh, always a, a joy to be around. He still is a joy to be around. He's got a great attitude, and he's he's going to fight it till the end. But he's it's definitely taking a toll on him. Um, you know, we made some accommodations so he could go on that trip. It was difficult for him, but he went and never complained a single bit. So this is our Land Cruiser Club, the Bourbon Barrel Land Cruisers, and our team name is PBR Cruisers. So if you would, go to the link, and again, anything you want to donate, I'd appreciate it. Um, maybe too late for him, but maybe we can help uh, someone else in the future. So everybody, stay safe.